got it about the countryside are farmhouses with their farm buildings. Round about lie the fields where the country people work to grow crops. Some are corn crops and others are roots, like this crop of sugar beet. Other country workers look after the domestic animals. Here is a herd of cows coming in from the fields to the cow shed to be milked. Most of the week, country people work round the farms, but on market day, many of them set off for the market town. Some of them drive in carts, while others are busy taking in flocks of sheep or a herd of cattle. Some who live near can walk to market, while others go on bicycles. And some farm people drive in cars to the town to do their business. There's a railway into the town, and when the level crossing gates shut, they block the market traffic on the road. But other country people are using this way of travelling, and coming in by train. When the gates open, traffic flows through again. Notice the cattle float on the left, in which cattle are being driven into the market. The passengers are flocking out of the station, carrying their baskets, and are making straight for the town, ready to sell and buy. The roads are full of traffic and people, and the church steeple towers above the business and bustle. For hundreds of years now, the country people have come into town on market day. But why did a market town grow up here at this place? Why is there this old castle guarding the bridge? Here is the site of the town on a map. It lies in a valley. Through the valley runs the river Trent. And hundreds of years ago, the valley was the easiest place for men to build a road. Then they built a second road that crossed the river. The first road was on a terrace of higher ground above flood level. And on this high ground, a town grew up. It was built where it could control the river crossings. At first, the town was small. There was the square castle by the river crossings, there was a church and a few houses. In the 17th century, it had grown to this size. Then, as you see, it lay within walls, which are marked here by the grey, crinkled line. In another hundred years, the town has expanded beyond the walls to this size. Notice the roots converging on the town and linking it with the neighbouring regions. Here is the same town at the present day. Main roads and two great railways lead in and out of it, but the surrounding district is still all farming land. The fields being marked in now are arable land, and those being marked in now are pasture. But the town is still not a large one, for you can see the trees in the distance. It is above everything the centre of the life of the countryside. For instance, here by the bridge and river is the poultry market. Country people are bringing in their poultry, which are weighed. After they've been weighed and the weight noted down, they're taken away and put in cages to be sold. There are not only chickens, but there are ducks and ducklings, and there are rabbits as well. Now look beyond the poultry market, and just across the river on the left is the cattle and sheep market. The animals that are sold here have been brought in from the whole of the valley, or from even further afield. As soon as the sheep are sold and bought, they're taken home. Those that have to go a long distance are loaded onto a float. Those that have only a few miles to go will be driven along the roads. The country people shop in the town on market day, 
to a travelling boot seller has set up by the market gate. The children enjoy market day and get a chance to learn about farming and livestock. In other pens are calves and cattle. The great centre of interest in the cattle market is the auction ring, where cattle are graded and sold. The auctioneer in charge of proceedings wears a white coat. The ring is crowded with farmers. Some have come to sell their beasts and others have come to buy, while the rest watch what's going on and so find out the state of farming business at the moment. The farmers not only crowd the cattle market, but fill the streets of the town on market day. Here they meet their friends and do their business, showing each other samples of grain. Whole crops are often sold on a sample in this way. When the farmer has made a sale, he's quite likely to spend some of his profit at the agricultural machinery shop, which is near the market. Modern farming demands many machines, so that agricultural machine making is one of the industries of the town. Here is the factory on the far side of the bridge beside the cattle market. Here is the main road. In the distance rises a chimney. This is the sugar beet factory, where farmers send their sugar beet to have the sugar extracted. Beet factory, machinery factory, river. Much of the transport of the town is done by water. Quick moving tugs pull barges up and down. In the distance, beside the castle, are the maltings. In this factory, the farmer's barley is made into malt. So the town is a centre for the farming industry. But it's also a place where the country people can sell their produce and buy goods they cannot make for themselves. Right in the centre of the town is the marketplace, filled with stalls on market day. Much of the country produce is brought in by small trailers pulled behind cars and unloaded at the back of the stalls. People from all around come in to buy all kinds of country produce, fruit, vegetables and flowers. and the country people will buy manufactured goods, such as china. And this woman is buying new lace curtains. As the day goes on, the marketplace gets more and more full of shoppers. Selling is hard work, and the stallkeepers snatch a hot drink in a slack moment. Facing the marketplace stands the town hall, the centre of the life and government of the town. All round the marketplace are inns of different kinds, where the country people can get food and refreshment on market day. This is a very old inn, largely built of wood. And here is another old wood and plaster house. The streets are thronged with people and vehicles. But as the day goes on, they begin to drift towards the bus station and laden with parcels, they crowd onto the buses to go home. The last of the cattle and sheep from the cattle market are being driven off through the streets too, getting in the way of the traffic, which is flowing out again from the town to the country. Travellers by train hurry towards the station. Now the people who have been to market get back to their villages and farms with the things they have bought and with the money they have made by selling their goods. The centre of activity shifts back from the town to the land. The countryside settles down to another week's work, but this work has its centre in the market town. <laughs> 